We're going to talk about pizza in about one minute. In about 34 seconds, we're going to talk about pizza. Ah, okay. Uh, uh, okay, sorry. Sorry about the delay. I was just looking for this box because I knew that inside this box, it's a really cool hat. Okay, well, here's one really cool hat. This says Rob's birthday pizza tour. Okay, but that's not the hat that I'm looking for. Uh, oh, there's also a really cool shirt. It's got uh, sparkles on it, like, uh, what do you call it? What do you call them? Sequins. It's got sequins on it. Ah, this is the hat that I was looking for. There it is. It is an amazing pizza hat, which is the perfect thing to wear at a moment like this when I've got pizza on the mind. In fact, I always have pizza on the mind. And right now, it's especially on my mind because I'm hanging out at home all day and I have all these supplies that I can use to make pizza. So I want to tell you a little bit about those supplies. Well, what ingredients do we need to even make pizza? Well, we need dough. But how do you make dough? There's flour. I got a big bag of flour. What else is there? There's water. I've got a pitcher of water. Oh, there's uh, what's that stuff that makes it taste salty? Salt. I got salt somewhere around here. 
Here it is. And there's sometimes pepper, which just fell out of the thing. Salt, and then one last ingredient. Flour, water, salt, and there's one last thing. It's the stuff that makes the dough rise. What is it called? Wait, do, if you know what it's called, type in in the comment right now. Flour, water, salt, yeast. That's the last thing. Yeast, that's it. So, what is yeast? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about right now. I'm gonna spend about 10 minutes telling you a little bit about the most ing important ingredient in dough, and then we'll talk about some other cool pizza things that maybe we'll cover in the future. Yeast is interesting because yeast looks like all this. This is all different kinds of yeast, but they all do slightly different things. Sometimes you see in the grocery store these little packages of yeast, and this stuff is called active dry yeast. Let me get some of it out. I've got a package of it I already started using. Let's find out what it looks like. Because this stuff looks different from some of the other stuff we're gonna use. Okay, active dry yeast. So it looks like this. But it also <gasps> looks like this. dust. It's a powder. But inside that dusty powder are little tiny yeasts. And yeast is a fungus. So the way that it works is, since it's a fungus, it's actually alive. And since it's alive, it needs food. And the food that it likes to eat is actually the food that we already have in our pizza dough, which is flour. Yeast likes to eat flour because it's filled with a bunch of different sugars. But this is just one different kind of yeast. There's a couple different ones. The other one I wanna show you is instant yeast. I'm gonna put this on the side. Instant yeast looks a little different from the active yeast. Let's pour it out. Ooh. Actually, it looks kind of the same. Take a look. Hmm. But it looks a little smaller because instant yeast is a little different from active yeast. When you use this stuff, you have to mix it around in water first. And when you use this stuff, you don't. But both of these things you buy in the grocery store. The most exciting thing that I want to show you is the yeast that's actually not available in a grocery store. It's the yeast that you keep in your refrigerator like it's a pet. And that's this stuff right here. This is called natural yeast. And natural yeast is really, really special because I'll show you. It looks like this. It looks like a bunch of goo. Because that's basically what it is. To make this, you just combine some flour, with some water, and then you let it sit out, and then all the yeast from the air, there's yeast all everywhere, you can't see it, it's invisible, invisible fungus. It all invades the mixture of flour and water, and then starts burping out gases, and that makes it rise up. So this, yesterday, was only this high. And then today I'm looking at it, and it's filled with all these bubbles. Those there because the yeast ate up a bunch of sugar in the flour and then burped out gases. So one thing, you have to feed it. So we're going to feed my natural yeast right now. First thing we do for it is I want to just, wait, wait, I have an idea. Oh, it's a really good idea. I'm going to put, I'm going to put this rubber band right at the top of all the, the mixture. And now I'm going to mix it. and I'm getting rid of all the bubbles. I'm knocking it all down, and the goo is, has dropped. 
because all the bubbles went away. It's dropped a little bit. See? That means since it's time to feed it, we're going to make it get a little bit higher. I'm going to use a new container. Here's a new container. And I'm going to weigh it. Check this out. When I use my scale, let's see if I can do this right. You probably won't be able to see this, but I'll explain it to you. I put it on my scale. And the first thing I'm going to do is add some water. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can't see it because I'm not, I can't move the computer. 50 grams. I went over. It says 60. That's okay. Because it just means we're going to make a little bit more yeast than I'm planning on making. So to that, I'm going to add 60 grams of flour. Thirty-four. You know what? Wait, I need to get to sixty, but I already have thirty-four. Mirabelle, if you're watching this, if I'm if I need to get to sixty and I'm already at thirty-four, how many more grams do I need in there? I'll wait. Thirty-four to get up to sixty. I know the answer. It's twenty-six. I'm just gonna do it. But I'm sure she found the same answer. Okay, I'm up at. 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. I got it. I'm up at 60. And now to that, I'm just going to mix this together. If you want to make your own magical yeast starter, you, that you can just stop there. And you would put a cover on it, like a loose cover, like a piece of plastic wrap with little holes poked in it. And then you leave it out for a few days and you'll start to see it bubble. But I'm actually going to add a little bit of my starter to the mix. I'm adding 60 grams. Let's see if we can get the tilt going on again. Very exciting. Okay, let's see. 60. Oh! 65 grams. Eh, it's okay. We will survive. Then, of course, since now we've got more stuff in the mix, we have to mix it up. And this is how you make a starter, a natural yeast starter. And this means if I leave this sitting here and I wait overnight, and tomorrow morning when I check it, it'll have risen a whole bunch. And the reason that it rises is because all the yeast that's in there is gonna eat up the sugar, it's gonna burp out some gas, and we can keep track of it with a rubber band, my favorite toy. If we put that rubber band right on the bottom, right at the top of the mark. When I come back tomorrow, we'll find out if it rose. First, I'll put a cat on it. So I think what's going to happen is I'm going to have to turn on a video tomorrow morning, and we'll see if this thing rose up a bunch. So you'll have to tune in tomorrow. We'll find out if it rose. And then next week, starting on Monday, I'm going to do one of these videos every day, probably about the same time, probably about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So we'll talk about a different pizza element each time. Maybe we'll talk about tomatoes. Maybe we'll talk about making pizza dough since we just made the yeast today. Maybe we'll talk about different ways that you can eat your slice of pizza. I really don't know. It could be anything. If you have an idea, leave it in the comments below. And if you have any other thoughts or questions about pizza, you can leave them here. I know one thing for sure is next week we're going to do a tour of my collection of pizza boxes. And the reason why it's special that I have a collection of pizza boxes is because I'm actually in the Guinness Book of World Records because I have the largest collection of pizza boxes. I knew you wouldn't believe me, so I grabbed this. It's for real. So next week, probably gonna do it on Friday. 
we're going to take a look at this giant collection of pizza boxes. So tune in then. Until then, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.